Hello and welcome to another edition of Dropping Bombs with me, your host, Corey Baumeister. As always, with the lovely folks here at TCGplayer.com. So today we are bringing you Blue Black Disinformation Campaign. Uh, this is a deck Logan Nettles um, perfected while we were Pro Tour testing. Those of you who don't know Logan Nettles, first of all, that's a mistake. Second of all, he's also known as uh, Professor Nettles. Um, Logan Nettles. Uh, also known and maybe more popularly known and feared by many as Jabberwocky Online. Uh, also a teammate of uh, mine here at KMC Genesis sponsored by uh, TCG Player. A phenomenal player, designed this beautiful masterpiece here. Today we played against uh, the Boros deck round one. We played a uh, mono red, uh, kind of more of a combo art like Phoenix. And then we played a Sp Spicy deck in round three. Stay tuned for those matches. I got the hyperlinks below along with the link to tcgplayer.com where I have a short write-up plus uh, my sideboard guide there for the deck. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the deck tech afterwards. Enjoy the game. All right, and welcome to the games. Super hyped to get this going. And we get to go first, even better. All right, this seems fine. Destroys a lot of stuff. Gets to an Elder Shaborn. I like it. I like it. All right. Start with a Swamp. No reason not to. I have always loved a deck that kills your opponent with their things. That's uh, that's always been one of the most, the most fun things. Okay. Mono White or Boros here. All right. We're going to go with this. We're going to see what he does. I don't necessarily want a Moment of Craving here. If I don't have to, I'd much rather Moment of Craving the a Johnny Pride Maid or something like that. So I'll probably leave this alone if, he, if our opponent just goes to combat here. All right. That doesn't matter since we will be using negative, negative 2, negative 2. Okay, um, hmm, this is interesting. Because I don't really care about the 1-1 body of this creature at all. So I think my opponent can sacrifice this and we don't gain the 2 life though. Yeah, alright, we'll kill this one. Prevent some damage. Alright, 22, bring it on. All right, we'll go Water Grave Tap, because at most we're going to be doing is cast downing something. More than likely just this Bodyguard to soak up damage here. The nice thing about uh, Vanguard being in play is our opponent is incentivized to uh, play their creatures pre-combat, so we really get to decide what we want to do. All right, Pride Maid. Okay, that's probably our new target. Yeah, and before combat, I think we'll want to take it down. Um, you know, there is some thought to taking out the bodyguard here and then contempting the pride maid. That's probably better. That's probably better. Um, the only thing that makes it worse is if we, uh, the white weenie decks don't have a lot of great creatures to bring back. So our Eldritch Reborns are, are pretty meh. But uh, bringing back a pride maid and then like contempting something, we get the trigger. But that's it's so little and irrelevant. We're just gonna ice down this, and we're doing this before combat just because our opponent would get this vanguard trigger here. So the less life, the better. Our opponent does get another option to play a creature then, but yeah, we don't really care too much. We'll take one twenty-one. All right, we're gonna say go. Kill something else more than likely. Now, what we don't want to see is like a heroic reinforcement. That cannot be good. Overall, this is not a very good matchup because we do kill stuff on the spot. We don't have um, we don't have a lot of board sweepers in the main. Okay. History of Benalia. Okay, well, we're just going to get rid of this. We'll only be able to gain one this turn. We'll play the Eldest Reborn next turn. At least we can get something back. It's not going to be a, a great Eldest Reborn, but... 
Oh, that's going to be a good one. That was a good top deck. The Devourer of Dreams. <laughs> All right, Eldish Reborn. All right, gets rid of the Vanguard. Now, Dream Eater can only kill something. It's not going to be able to block next turn because our opponent will have the history here. That's kind of lame, too, because our opponent will have um, this flipped. We do get to block that now, though, so that will be uh, pretty good next turn. All right, our opponent discards their last card. Yeah, uh... Logan said this perfectly well. I was like, well, when we were testing for this deck, I was like, well, Logan, how does this deck actually kill? And he's like, well, you pretty much just demoralize your opponent into conceding. <laughs> I laugh so hard, but it's pretty accurate. Yeah, one thing I might do here, bouncing a token is great. And, ah, actually, yeah, I'm probably going to bounce one pre-combat just so this Legion landing doesn't flip. Another option we would have is... With the attack trigger on the stack bouncing Legion landing, but that's also not very good. So we're just going to ship it. And landing is one way that this deck can actually scrape through. It takes a long time, but when we just have spot removal and they're still just making creatures each turn, it gets a little worse. So we are going to start by Dream Metering here during combat. We get to surveil four times, which is just outrageous. To find something good. Um, something to control the creatures a little bit more. And actually we are going to block here because we want it to die. We just want to bring it back. Okay, so. Oh, this is going to be good. So we're going to put this to the graveyard. We're going to put this on top. And this on top. And campaign on top. And we're just going to start kind of going nuts with that. We'll bounce this. Now, actually, we should have probably waited for combat here. Yeah, we're going to snap block this because we get it back after our draw step. Ah, eh, sure. Okay, now draw a card. We'll take Dream Eater, please. And at this point, our, pro our opponent is going to probably concede out of uh, demoralization, as Logan would put it. Okay, so now I don't think we need this, and I don't think we need this. And we'll keep both of these just because they combo well with campaign, just so we don't run out of gas. So we'll get this out of here. Now we get to, we only get to campaign once this turn, but we will get to be doing this for a while. Start with the campaign. You discard nothing. We draw a card. Limited All-Star here. Limited All-Star breaking its way into standard. All right, draw a card. We know what we're drawing. Boom. All right, we're going to discover. And this is just a great card, too. The dispersal side is good as well. All right. Um, I guess they're both good. We'll keep them both. Bring this back. Now, just in case our opponent plays the a deadly five drop, we can four spike it. <clears throat> Not a single five drop I can think of that would actually be relevant, but... We're going to pass, cannot attack. All right, what you got? What you got? All right, holding that hand and that card in hand, I don't recommend. This deck uh, tends to attack the hand more than the gr more than the battlefield.
Opponent deep in the tank. Thinking if they should play this Pride of the Conquerors or just discard it. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. This is the one thing that I've been absolutely loving about Arena. This doesn't happen on Arena. You don't have to wait. People play their games of Magic. And is that all we have to... Is, is that so hard to ask for that people just want to play the best game in the world? I don't think so. Campaign. What did you hold on? It doesn't make any sense. Whatever card's in your hand. A plane. Yep, still should have played it. All right. We'll do some discovering. All right. Thought erasure. Cast down. I suppose we can keep both. Why not? Thought Eraser just to bring back Campaign. We're on the path to demoralization here. Crunch. Alright, what you got? Tag him for one? I oh, will kill it. Why not? Once again, part of this general strategy, just uh, demoralize them into conceding instead of actually putting their life total to zero. Alright, well. Yeah, I think just a Eldish Reborn this time would be fine. <laughs> this deck is so much fun to play. Ah, yeah. I wonder how much actual damage we're gonna deal in this uh, dropping bombs. I, I don't think it's gonna be a lot. The amount of games, probably a decent amount. At least let's hope. Okay, so we're bringing in Golden Demise, of course. Fungal Infection is also great. Um, and we have the Ritual Soots in the main as well. So cards we don't necessarily want. Um, you don't need a bunch of campaigns. And Thought Erasure isn't insanely good, but it's still somewhat needed. Um, definitely getting rid of some of our reactive spells. So cards we don't touch uh, are like Contempt, Ritual, so Golden Demise. Moment of Craving, Cast Down, Fungal Infection. Um, I tend to not like taking out both searches, so one of them's untouchable. One of them we might want. Blink's okay against the enchantment. And now it really comes down to, for me, Syncopates, Sabotages, and Erasures. Um, these are the cards that I think are kind of our flex slots. And I kind of like taking out Syncopate on the draw. Ah, actually, it does counter... Uh, History of Benalia, which is a big deal. So maybe we'll just take out the Sabotages. I don't think they're great. Um, disinformation Campaign is also a little weak. Um, but it's kind of the name of the game here. So we're just going to keep it like this. Question mark? Yeah, we'll do this. All right. All right, so we got the Thought Erasure for the Dross. Helps fix our mana base a little bit and also takes away like a key history of Benalia or something like that. So we're definitely going to keep it. All right, Golden Demise is a great draw. Now we're just going to kind of set up, use this to bait our opponent into playing into it and then just wrath the board. So normally something like a Vanguard would be the most annoying thing and that kind of doesn't matter either. Okay, now we're just trying to find that second swamp and win the game, probably. So now we just want to Thought Erasure anything that might... Okay, well now we're set. Now anything that stands in our way of Golden Demising next turn is what our target will be. Whoa! Well, that Frenzy stands in our way of winning the game over a long period of time. 
and a disinformation campaign. This is this creates our long game, so we're gonna keep that as well. And now we just hope our opponent slams that pride mate and then just concedes on turn three. <laughs> Once again, we're not going to kill them for a very long time, but the demoralization aspect is uh, quite real. Here we go. Our opponent has no fear. Which our opponent may grow to regret. Boom! Golden Demise. <laughs> but this deck, I mean, we did run into or notice something that is a big problem with this deck. Can't really beat a Resolve Frenzy, you know? Here we're just gonna get the campaign going, get our opponent's last card, just in case it is a Frenzy. And we want to find land, so... Yep, no such luck. And now we're gonna do whatever is in our power to make sure a Frenzy never hits the table and we'll probably not be... will not uh, ever lose here. So our opponent has another card. This ensures that our opponent will not play Frenzy next turn. Otherwise, we have to leave open a counter spell. But yeah, this will just get rid of it, whatever. Oh, no. Oh, yep. Yeah. Well, that was stupid. I kind of forgot. I get to draw a card. <laughs> Don't do that at home, kids. Okay, now our opponent is actually doing some things. So maybe we should just uh, ritual a soot and get the old two for one here. Seems fine to me. Boom. Now our opponent is officially demoralized. No cards, no creatures. That's usually about the time that they pack it in, but we'll see. Something like a history or something would be pretty good here. That unfortunately is not as good. Enchantment Warfare coming down. <laughs> this deck is so much fun. Uh, gotta love when your opponent knows they're at 0% but doesn't want to concede. Alright, now... Now we'll just start uh, campaigning here. Fought a Razor, our opponent, for absolutely no reason. Um, and we do have the blink in case our opponent actually does get Frenzy. Otherwise, I'd say we should play around it a little more. But we don't have to because we have the blink. So we'll campaign here. Play the land we kept on tap. We'll send it back. All right, hey, oops. So now we're putting a creature into play. And honestly, all the creatures are so bad. We're going to get a Healer's Hawk just to, uh, you know, have a, a one-fourth of a, or one-fifth of a Bane Slayer coming in. All right. Well, our opponent has no cards, so we're going to campaign. And now we have the ability to hold open a Counterspell and win the game with a Healer's Hawk. Something you didn't think you'd say see when you clicked on a blue-black disinformation campaign <laughs> deck. All right. All right, what do we got here? Conclave Tribunal. I don't think there's a single thing we're supposed to care about with this. Uh, yeah, so we'll let that happen. <laughs> yep, getting rid of the all-powerful healers, Hawk. Sure. All right, now we will thought rate erasure our opponent for the old two-mana surveil one. A swamp, don't really need that now. Get our campaigns back. And now we're only going to play one because now we're still playing around Frenzy. Um, and, and I guess Frenzy wouldn't even be that bad right now. We're just going to play it. Once again, only playing this this way because we have the blink. And now we're out of surveil, so now we just have to use the cards in our hand to win the game? That's not cool. 
All right. Yep. I think we can manage to deal with that. Anybody who is, uh, you know, only has 25 minutes to watch you dropping bombs, this is the time where you can fast forward to round two. Uh, it, it'll be six or seven turns, but we'll, we'll, we'll win this game. We'll give our opponent, uh, you know, a little bit of thought like they might, but. All right, well. We can get saucy now if we want in blink of an eye a campaign, but there's no reason. Yep, there's the, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Not winning by putting our life total, our opponent's life total to zero probably ever in a match, okay? Stay tuned, uh, round two. Round two time, let's see if we can uh, get this campaign going again. I will start. That's not good. We will mulligan that one. Ugh. Ugh. I think we keep this because all we need is a land, but yeah, it's not great either. All right. Well, let's kind of hope we're playing against creatures. Otherwise, if we're playing against Jeskai or something, I don't think there's a way we could possibly win. Mono red. Could be a bit of a struggle as well. We'll see. All right. So we'll discover. We're trying to find lands here. Lands on a campaign would be good. Um, yeah, I don't think we want this cast down since we already have so much removal, but we will take the swamp. Now we just really want to... Um, Aim for a turn. Hopefully our opponent plays creature, creature, and we go discovery into ritual of soot and get a good three for one here. Ooh, that's a good card. That's a good card. Yeah, I think we should uh, try to get that going. Yeah, now we got two draws at a land. It's a little more risky with trying to play a ritual of soot next turn, but okay, that's great. Now this is just perfect. Now, especially if our opponent plays into this, and we get to Soot plus do something. But, you know, Mono Red plays four Frenzies main, which is, like, absolutely terrifying. It's this deck's single-handedly worst problem. And it doesn't have a lot of great answers to it um, besides, you know, bouncing it with Dispersal. So we are afraid of that. Ooh, a combo Mono Red, huh? Yes, that's fine. A lot of damage, but it's fine. We get a three for one. All right, ritual time. And now we just hope to fade the frenzy. All right. No frenzy. No frenzy. And then if our opponent doesn't do anything too crazy, we get to go discovery and disinformation campaign next turn. Tormenting voice, that's not a phoenix, that's good. Fury, opponent's just spinning the wheels. All right, we'll take that. Now we get to have a rebuild turn. Now we're looking for gasoline here. And when I say gasoline, I mean non-lands. Eldritch Reborn is fine. It's not great, but it's, it's good enough to keep in my opinion. Maybe, God, there really is just no good targets to bring back. I think it is still okay. Just because it kills a creature on a one-for-one -one basis and then we'll bring back a blocker. I'm not pleased about it, but I'm going to keep it. All right, campaign. Discard, we draw. All right, now we got removal. Now we're just afraid of that one slippery enchantment. It's really our only fear right now. No, no. What was that? Is that a Ryle? Okay. All right, well, ooh, Dream Eater. I was gonna say we have a pretty easy turn now by just playing Eldritch Reborn. It still might be the case, but God, Dream Eater's really good right now. And Dream Eater is great at bouncing permanence as well, like bouncing Frenzy and then disinformation campaigning it 
So for now, we're just going to do this just because we want to hold on to that dream eater for that exact scenario a little bit later. Get that out of there. Okay. Our opponent is going to be demoralized here shortly. It, this deck should be called Demoralization Campaign. And I think that is what I'm going to call it. That's too good. <laughs> oh, Risk Factor. That's a card we do not like. We don't like that card at all. At some point, we just want to let them draw four cards, though, and then just have them discard them. Risk Factor from the hand. Interesting. We're still going to take four, but we're not happy about it. Yep. Runner. We're cool with that. We hope our opponent attacks. Nom, 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 nom. All oh, the eating. <laughs> Should we keep an active tally how many times our opponent concedes at 20? 20 or over 20. So far, I think it's three. Out of, no, it's two out of three. We got our opponent down to 16. Okay, so now mono red. I like the fungal infection. We don't have a lot for this deck. Unfortunately, I think we have to almost bring in duresses. Um, Thief of Sanity just can't be good if they ever have any shocks. Um, kind of like max amount of disinformation because we have enough removal. I like having syncopates. I think I honestly like almost everything about the deck. Search for his Kanta is just okay. It's a good way to get us to the long game here. Um, you can see wanting to get rid of a counter spell, a couple counter spells on the draw. And these cast downs have got to be good. I don't like Golden Demise because their creatures can get a little big, but cast down for uh, Flamekin, just a card you have to deal with. So I think I like this. Yep, we're going to do that. Just ways to not let that flame can get carried away, especially in this deck that plays so many one drops. Like if they let, if that goes, we die. We're gonna keep this. This hand is great. Okay. We'll play the swamp to put the fear of fungal infection into our opponent's brain. Whoa! Nice. We might kill that. I think we'll let our opponent uh, hit us for at least one damage with something. Because if our opponent plays like a Chain Father, we might... Hmm. Our opponent is doing nothing, huh? Oh, Risk Factor is going to be the play. If that's the case, I still think we should get rid of this. Now our opponent's going to do it now at least, and then uh, we're going to take five. Five's a lot. Now it's time for the campaign. So otherwise our opponent just gets to sit back forever if we don't have one of these campaigns. And now this pressures their hand to dumping it, and then we can kill the creatures that our opponent plays. That's kind of the whole MO. Ooh, that's lame though. That is lame. But that's not that big of a deal. This deck can return it, you know, like once or twice. But we're just going to kill it and eventually they run out of cards. So it's not as bad. Now we're just hoping no double one drops here. I imagine they can't keep in all their one mana cantrips because they're not that good. Um, okay, so we got a pretty good turn here. Thought Erasure, see what's going on. Oh, all the goods. Okay, but there is public enemy number one experimental frenzy i just absolutely hate that card it's so good against us and even next turn it would be phenomenal so i just have to take that card 
Um, a land, I don't think we need that right now. We'll get a little bit more greedy. And we have the moment of craving if somehow our opponent uh, gets back a phoenix. And our opponent might just help us out by discarding their hand. This card is also pretty good against us, though, so I'm a little terrified of that. Now we hope our opponent plays a creature and plays into the Eldest Reborn. He's going to decline and just try to play a Risk Factor. That's okay with us, I think. Um... If our opponent's just going for risk factor, I think we still just get the Eldest Reborn into play. And yeah, we want to start clocking our opponent in some way. And if Eldest Reborn isn't the best clock, but since it doesn't, five mana do nothing, but risk factor, we're going to take four. Yeah, there's going to be some points where we let our opponent draw the cards, um, but not right now. Ooh, that's another Phoenix. That's terrifying. Two of them is not good. It seems pretty tough to bring back. So we'll have our opponent discard a card. Probably going to have our opponent discard another card. Shot goes away. So we know our opponent has the Flame of Keld. All right, so campaign time. We would love another campaign here or another way to discard a card. No such luck. And now the question is, do we want to put a land into play for Fungal Infection? I don't see a reason to really need that right now, so we're just going to go tap land. Might want a moment of craving if our opponent tries to phoenix us. All right, Flame of Keld coming down. Yep. So now we get a card. And there is... Turn target non non permanent an opponent controls. Okay, I was gonna say maybe we could do the Eldest Reborn trick here, but that does not work. Um Yeah, we might as well get a Phoenix, start getting the clock going. Now there is maybe some reason to bounce this flame of Keld. Just delay it one more turn. Hmm. Our opponent only has risk factors in the graveyard. We just don't want to let it uh, get carried away here and be able to uh, do extra damage with us. It also draws two cards next turn. I like this tempo swing, actually. So we are just going to eat it. Dream eat it, of course. Okay, we don't want Ritual of Soot. Moment of Craving we don't want. I like this information campaign and I like this. So we're going to go top, top. Yeah, we'll go top, top. One, two, three. Yeah, disinformation campaign on top just because we can uh, play campaign and dispersal if we want to. If we had one less land, we would have put it in the opposite order. Um, those of you who maybe missed it, I put the campaign below the discovery dispersal. And we might actually use dispersal if our opponent has Flame of Keld here. And we also might uh, Fungal Infection just to get a creature here to start the beats. That's what Blue Black has to do without the Scarabian God. You gotta, you gotta kill, cre kill them in odd ways. Yep, that's okay. The Flame of the Keld. Opponents discarding their hand. We are going to Fungal Infection our Dream Eater just to get the sapling. 
Okay, so now we can campaign. And now we can dispersal if we want here. So our opponent doesn't draw those two cards and it seems worth it. They control. Yeah, so they do not control this Phoenix. They own it. So we're gonna attack. And now upkeep, we're going to do this. Just to get this Flame of Keld back to their hand and then discarded. All right. Now our opponent only has one draw to try to play something. Four, four, five, six. And yeah, we got eight coming back. And our opponent either got caught by the F6 or just had absolutely nothing. Yeah, who knows? We're going to find out after we uh, disinformation campaign them. Yep, <laughs> the demoralizing continues. Round three, action coming at you. Round three, action coming at you. All right, we get to go first again. How lucky. Okay, this hand is fine. Anytime you have search on two, I think it's just, you know, like it's very tough for you to have a hand that's not keepable. All right, so we'll go water grave tapped, ship it back. All right, so we played mono red and white weenie here, and we haven't really had a tough time so far, in my opinion. Um, God, let's see if we can maybe play controller Golgari, the big ones. Evolving Wilds, that's uh, not in a lot of decks here. Um, I would definitely guess we're playing a three color deck. Something where search for his count is probably going to be quite good. We'll pass it back. Mr. Elvish Piper, probably not playing elves, would be my guess. <laughs> All right, blue. Blue, white. Okay. Probably control. The Elders Reborn. I think we'll keep this one. It's not immediately great, and we're definitely looking for, like, disinformation campaign, but I think this card is just too good. So we are going to run into a problem if this is control where we just have too much removal. It's just what happens, especially with Esper control here. Okay. I'm going to put that in the graveyard. All right. Um, we will play a land here that comes into play untapped. Very likely to even be using Contempt, but... Um, and very likely that the damage will actually matter from Watery Grave, but still. Okay. So our opponent's going to have to ferry, which is a bit of an advantage. Mm, sabotage. We'll keep that one. Counter spells are good. We don't need this this time. Now, a card that we're afraid of here, like the most afraid of, is Chemister's Insight. I hate that card. It's so good against us. All right, going for the Teferi. Ooh, a creature. We love that, because then we can Eldish Reborn next turn. Yeah, we're not even going to do anything about that. We'll let that happen. All right, what do we want to do with a Search for his Kanta? We'll put that in the graveyard. And now we will play the Eldest Reborn. If our opponent has the Spell Pierce, I guess they got us. That would be one weird deck. The old Spell Pierce Shalai Esper deck, of course. So now we do have to be, you know, Teferi is a good play now. Um, but we do have ways to answer it quite effectively. A Karn, kind of the same thing. So, uh, normally I wouldn't like giving our opponent a land in this spot because usually they kind of need it, but treasure map is actually quite good against us, so... Hmm... I think we will just give them the island. Just in case they do have another land, they get to play treasure map, which I don't want to happen right now. So now, search for his Kanta. <clears throat> Ooh, the Eldest Reborn. Uh, I think we're going to keep this. 
Might not be our play this turn, but I do like it. So we'll have our opponent discard. Moment of craving. Okay, now now our options are just jam Eldritch Reborn into more than likely in a gate, which is quite bad in my opinion. I think that's our last option. Or Thought Erasure, see what's going on, and then Contempt Karn. And I think that's just a much better option here. Eh, it would have actually worked. <laughs> so... Now, one thing we're for sure not taking is Lyra, because if our opponent slams Lyra and we get to Eldritch Reborn, that's going to be great. Um, Essence Scatter does absolutely nothing. Cast Down is bad. Moment of Craving is bad. Ruinous Blast is good if our opponent could keep that Karn. Um, and I guess it's the only relevant card. I don't even know if it's that relevant. I almost just want to take Essence Scatter here. Um, yeah, we're going to take Essence Scatter just for Dream Eater here, but yeah, we're looking pretty good. Um, we want our opponent to jam Lyra here. That's why we're letting this whole thing happen. What an interesting brew we're playing against. Yeah, we'll just give a, we'll just take Essence Scatter here. We're not really afraid of anything in our opponent's hand, which is a good feeling. Um, so Thought Erasure of our own. I would say we should keep it, but our opponent's hand is so bad we don't really want to take every anything. So now we'll just contempt this, let our opponent do their thing. Alright, our opponent's hand is full of removal and five mana sorcery creatures. The Eldest Reborn does great work against those. Here comes Lyra. Oh, something else. Lawbreaker, what does this even do? Each opponent can't cast instant or sorceries during that player's next turn. Okay, we're not going to be casting an instant or sorcery, I promise. Uh, we do not want to land. Okay, yep, we'll take Shalai. And now Eldest Reborn time. Our opponent is going to be able to play a Lyra now, which is kind of a big deal. Whenever this attacks, you may pay... Yeah, we just can't let that ability happen, though, unfortunately. So maybe it was a mistake not taking Lyra, thinking that our opponent would draw something like this. But I really don't think it's going to matter. It's it's fine details here. Now we'll get to bring back this Azur. Okay. Yeah, Lyra might just be able to hit us a couple of times, but we really don't care too much about that. Here comes Lyra. So our opponent could ruin this blast. We'll just make sure we leave a counter spell open for that. And we do know our, we have perfect information. This is our opponent's hand. And now we do get to flip search. We don't want to land. Transform. And now our opponent discards. That moment of cravings, I'm guessing, is gone. And now our opponent gets to get to discard one more time i'm guessing that cast down is gone and now we get to yeah we just get to say go we'll get our opponent this moment of craving is actually going to be great like <laughs> it will kill the lyra yeah and we have the counter spell to back it up so this is just going to work block Moment of craving, and have counterspell back up. <laughs> the demoralization is going to continue for at least this game. Now we can get a Lyra back next turn, but more than likely we're just going to take that Lawbreaker. Ah, we actually can't activate the ability, so it's not that good. And this is whatever our opponent top decked. Aurelia, yeah, we'll get rid of it. Why not? Then we get to have our opponent discard one last card. Keep that on top. That's the demoralization. <laughs> okay, moment of craving is very bad. Cast down has to be bad. Everything's a legend. Uh, Thief of Sanity is going to be a good one. 
We want more campaigns. Ritualist soots are bad. Um, duresses are going to be good. All these cards in our in our sideboard are horrendous right now. So now it's just what cards are a little bit horrendous as well. And the cards that stick out to me are Contempt, Eldish Reborn, maybe Counter Spells, but they actually seem kind of good. And then Dream Eaters. Maybe we just never need Dream Eater. I can get behind that. I think we want everything else. We just never need Dream Eater. We'll win with Thief or our opponent actually has relevant threats so that Eldish Reborn is actually max, you know, awesome. Um, yeah, this is just going to be hopefully one demoralizing victory. A demoralizing sweep. We're 5-0 in games as well. I want this game. I want the 6-0 demoralization. Oh, this hand's so good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> We're going to keep. If we can get this campaign to stick. So here we want to duress turn one because our opponent could have search. That's one card that really gets us. All right. Negate, negate. Ah, the double negate. Lame. In Bolus's clutches, huh? And Yagamoth's vile offering. We're just going to get that negate out of there. All right, there goes a chapel. Sadly, we won't be able to play it next turn. We could just go for the discovery right now, try to find another duress. I think that seems what we should do here. Um, syncopate, not bad. Contempt, I don't like, but we will keep this syncopate. We'll go for the long game a little bit. Right now our opponent does have this negate active, so we're not going to walk into it. No fun. The campaign would have been such a good play there if we knew it was wide open, but they had to have two counter spells. And now we're just going to play draw go until our opponent taps out. With our opponent missing land drops, um, the demoralization will come in a different form. Uh, the deck their opponent is playing is demoralizing them instead of uh, us. Now, especially with them next turn going to have to discard, we're not going to go into their plans of letting them use any of their spells. Um, next turn, we can actually stick a campaign. Yeah, next turn, now we, we probably are just going to stick campaign now because we can have syncopate for two backup and our opponent drew the land out of it. So now we got to start doing something. So now our opponent's going to try to negate this. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean, on paper, this card doesn't look that great. If they haven't played a game of limited, of course, in uh, the new set. All right. We'll syncopate that. Our opponent is going to have to discard a card. Well, we draw a card. All right. We get another one. Oh, that's not fair. It's not fair at all. You know, sometimes you feel bad about doing this to your opponent, you know? It's just, these these people have families like us, you know? I mean, it's just, uh, it's kind of rude sometimes. Ooh. All right, this legend brew, I'm I, I'm all about it. It's not going to work out well for him, but I am all about it. All right, now we get to uh, go with the old Eldish Reborn here. We just got to keep all legends off the field at all, to at all costs. And then it seems like we'll be fine. Our opponent can't bull his clutch that turn. That was the only reason to, like, tap out there. But now our opponent can do that next turn, so that is a bit annoying. Ooh, that's a good one. Have our opponent discard a card. Now we're going to try this campaign out. On a gate. Okay. I think we should run it out? Question mark? Because we can kill it if need be if our opponent decides to bolus clutch this. We're going to keep it. 
These contempts are not great, but we had to take something out. Okay, so our opponent can clutch the thief or clutch the eldest reborn, but that's a little more risky because we can bring this back next turn and then, oh my god, that is a combo with eldest reborn. Our opponent's stuck in a rough spot because we can just get the eldest reborn back and play it immediately and eldest reborn them putting the Thief of Sanity into our graveyard and then bringing it back two turns later. So our opponent almost has to take the Eldritch Reborn. But that being said, if our opponent takes Eldritch Reborn, we're kind of in trouble because our opponent can do that. Well, no, no, no. Our opponent cannot because it's something in their graveyard. Okay. Okay, now we get to do this play. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is going to be dirty. All right. I would like to put our only target which would have been my first target anyways. And now that's only target. I would like to exile. Now I would like to play that, believe it or not. What a combo. Uh, exile a creature, please. Or discard, <laughs> or sacrifice a creature, please. All right, we'll take two. <laughs> that was awesome. The demoralizing continues. Now we can just start activating this. Okay. Now we have, yeah, an extra draw spell here. We know one card in our opponent's hand, which does not do a thing. So, yep. Now we know we have no information. We are going to check to see what we got. I know this doesn't check lands, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, a thief. Okay. We're going to try to play it. Thief of Sanity. How about to search for his Kanta? This is getting a little dangerous if our opponent has that Wrath spell, but that's okay. We'll jam it. Yeah, just in a gate, that was more likely. Oh, a tap land there. Okay. Now I'd like to bring back a Thief of Sanity. I would like it to attack with Thief. We'll leave Rona back. This is just absurd. Trigger. Ooh, Disdainful Stroke. I like that. Put this in our hand. All right, we'll see what Rona's got going on. Thought Erasure. Okay, sure. <laughs> this is insane. Oh, yep. Yeah. Karn Sundering. Sure, sure. Bottom. Why not? We don't really have to play that yet. We want to hold up Disdainful Stroke. So we'll just ship it. <laughs> this is busted. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, well, that's it. That was the perfect 3 0 6 0 sweep. What more? Uh, are, are you not entertained, people? <laughs> this deck is gas, okay? This deck is awesome. I hugely recommend it, um, not only because it's fun, but because I think it has some game in our metagame right now. It has its problems against Frenzy. You know, normally the Boros matchup isn't as good as we made it seem. Um, but yeah, it is a, it is a great deck. I want to thank you all for uh, watching. Stay tuned for the deck tech afterwards. See you there. And welcome to the deck tech here. Woo! That was a beating. That was kind of a beating right there. That was nice. That was nice. This deck is fun and good. I mean, we we didn't even really have a game. Those were those were all, you know, just absolute beatings. Um, so we'll get to the deck list here. So mana base, pretty straightforward. The four watery graves, four drowned catacombs, and then a eight and eight split on lands, and then the extra land was just what we thought a little. We need a little bit more of. There's a lot of double black here. Plus, there's double black here, so we thought we needed extra of that. But the deck really does need one of each, so you have to play a consistent split mana base, which does add problems from time to time. I'll uh, get to the spells here. Search for his Kanta, a card that's gotten a, a lot worse lately. It's not that great of a card, but it is a great card in this deck because you really need it. Treasure map and kind of the new hotness of like Azura's Gateway just really don't do the trick in this kind of deck. We have no use for infinite mana. 
Also, boosting with treasure map, you know, drawing cards off the land is okay, but we need to be finding exact spells with this Kanta. Plus, getting cards into your graveyard isn't nothing for the Eldritch Reborn, so it's just by far the superior one. One blink of the eye, basically in case we run into uh, Experimental Frenzy or some other tough-to-deal-with permanent. And then it just comes to all we're doing is removal, hand disruption, and card advantage. That's all this deck is. We don't kill anybody with our creatures besides our two Dream Eaters, which isn't that great. Um, but yeah, we have four Thought Erasure um, as, our, our, as our main deck hand disruption spells. Our removal, Moment of Craving, Cast Down, both good against certain things. Adanto Vanguard is a very scary card. We've got to have ways to deal with it. And just three contempts is not reliable enough. Even though Moment of Craving can just be very bad at points, it's uh, still a necessary evil. Uh, Sinister Sabotage and uh, Syncopate as our counter spells here. They do a great job. Um, Sinister Sabotage also combos with our star of the show, Disinformation Campaign. Anybody who's played uh, Demir and Limited in uh, um, Ravnica here recently knows that if they have this in their hand, they feel great. And if their opponent plays it against them on turn three, you feel terrible. And it's very similar in the standard metagame. We have our uh, Veraska's Contempt, still the best removal of the format. There's not much removal that is unconditional, and this is as close as it gets here. Uh, Ritual of Soot, absolutely needed because a deck that just goes wide real fast. You can't really rely on Cast Down and Moment of Cravings and Eldritch Reborns to get there. you got to have a reset button, and that's exactly what this is. For Eldritch Reborn, my favorite card, like maybe in our standard format right now, it's so good against Niv-Mizzet, it's so good against Teferi. Um, it's just really a great card right now. It's great against Golgari. It's absolutely horrible against uh, White Weenie. <laughs> and it's because you can't, anytime when your opponent does not have good things to bring back from their graveyard, it's going to be bad. Um, it's the price you got to pay. And when I say bad, not horrendous, but still bad. Uh, Dream Eater is a pretty good card. Discovery Dispersal is phenomenal in this deck. It does everything you want. It fixes your mana early. It gets you the Surveil Trigger for Disinformation Campaign. It wins the game against Lich's Mastery on the spot with Dispersal. I know that's super relevant and only relevant to uh, Alian Trazi playing uh, the Lich's Mastery combo deck. And uh, yeah, that's the main deck there. Sideboard, we have a lot of cards that are geared for control because we do have a bunch of removal in the main deck. So we got four Duress, uh, phenomenal, best hand disruption spell. One Fungal Infection. This just screams out a Danto Vanguard for me. Two more Cast Downs, just a great condition, uncondition, shouldn't say unconditional because it has conditions, but a great removal spell against uh, the Drake decks. Very important there. Um, three Golden Demise, great against the Weenie decks. Also decent against Red, not that good, but mainly for White Weenie here. An extra campaign when you just, you know, when it's good, it's good. And then four Thief. Uh, you're playing a blue-black mid-range at any point. This should be main deck or sideboard as a four of, no matter what. It's just too good. I want to thank you so much for watching here. I think this deck is awesome. I want to thank uh, Professor Nets here, a.k.a. Jabberwocky, for uh, providing me with uh, the phenomenal list and providing it to you as well. And I will see you all next weekend here. No events this weekend. So I'll be taking a nice, much-needed time off to, uh, you know, collect my thoughts. And we'll be cooking up uh, a nice spicy brew for next week's Dropping Bombs. We'll see you then.